what we're showing you is how to use the muzzle facing tool. This tool is designed to work from anything from 20 gauge up to 10 gauge, so you can see it's a little bit larger in diameter than the 12 gauge barrel. This is a um, Mossberg barrel. Mossberg barrels tend to be fairly thick, so you can see that it's uh, pretty close to diameter of the cutter, but yet still plenty of room there for a larger barrel. Um, obviously when this barrel was cut off it wasn't cut real square, you know, the saw kind of ran off to one side. So that's one of the reasons that you need to have a muzzle facing tool is to square things up. You also don't want to leave hacksaw marks or, uh, or whatever you use to cut it off. You don't, you don't want to leave that rough finish. Uh, basically we, uh, in the stills I showed you that you're going to deburr the inside. Um, so we did that first so that the bushings will slip in nice and easy. We showed you that you could use a hand drill to do this. If you do that, you want to use one with variable speed so you can keep the speeds low. Uh, you're going to want to use a good cutting fluid. Uh, Tap Magic will work just fine. Here in the shop I use um, Spectrum Cutting Oil, which is made by Conoco. Um, there's all kinds of good quality cutting oils that machine shops use, and, and if you have a local machine shop, they might help you out by finding something local. Uh, when we cut this, we're going to cut it back so that it comes just flush with the front of that island underneath the rib. And I do that just because it looks a little bit better and uh, that'll also be part of getting us squared up since we're a little further back on one side. Um, this is basically on a center in the tailstock. I showed you in a still that I have a spud that I stick in the chamber that allows me to put a center on the barrel. And the good thing about that is any barrel that has an extension on it, in shotguns oftentimes they do, uh, that center, that spud, allows you to basically reach past that extension on the barrel and still center the barrel nicely and, and control it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be running the headstock to drive the tool. I'm going to use the tailstock to drive the barrel onto the tool. And uh, I'm, in order to keep it from spinning, I'm just holding the lug here in the middle. Um, you're not going to be uh, using so much force that you have to worry about this ripping out of your hand or anything. But uh, at the same time, be smart about it. Keep your hand in a position where you can let go easily if it did grab. And, uh, you know, you don't want to get in a position where you could pinch yourself or, or uh, get your hand hung up. So just be aware of that. Um, and I'm going to take off my ring for obvious reasons. So with uh, no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and fire up the lathe. You probably won't be hearing me talk while it's running. Put a little oil on the cutter here. And we are ready to go. So here we are. notice it grabs just a tiny bit. And I'm just going by feel, just, just enough pressure to make sure I'm cutting, but not so much to uh, jerk it out of my hand. You see nice clean chips building up there. I'm going to give it another shot of oil because I can feel it dragging a little bit. What I'm waiting for is I'll feel that become uniform as it cuts. And you'll see the chips will start to curl off in a more uniform fashion as well. And we'll stop and see where we're at.